Hello, this is Brett Etheridge, founder of Dominate the GRE. And in this video, I'd like to take a look at a slightly harder variation of a common GRE word problem involving two sets. And if you haven't gone ahead and tried this problem on your own, you can press pause and do so now. But what makes this problem a little bit more challenging is that it's actually asking for the greatest possible number of students that could have taken both algebra and chemistry. And so this is what we call a max, let me get my pen to work here, max min problem. And again, it's a two sets problem where ordinarily we would be able to use our classic formula for two sets problems, A plus B, group A plus group B, minus both, both being the overlap, uh, plus neither, I'll just use n for neither, equals the total. And so this problem would be super easy if all we had to do was solve for both. Because we're told that 142 students took algebra, so that would be group one. 121 took chemistry, that's group two. You know, we would subtract both. And if the problem had given us neither, then we just set the whole thing equal to the 236 students there are, and we could quickly and easily solve for both. As it stands now, we don't have all of that information. In fact, we know that there are 263 people accounted for. However, there is some overlap, both. Again, there is a certain subset that might not take either class, either algebra or chemistry. And so that's where this problem gets interesting. Because really, if we kind of manipulate it at this point, we see that both minus neither is going to equal 27. And what that means is there are a lot of potential combinations of the overlapping both, the neither category, that when you subtract them will equal those 27 unaccounted for people. And so what we need to do is we need to go back and we need to look at our Venn diagram for help in solving this problem. Because how do we figure out the greatest possible number? Well, we need to go to the extremes. And that's really the secret for max-min problems is that the correct answer usually lies at the extremes. So here's what I mean by that. If this rectangle represents the entire world of 236 students, and a Venn diagram, of course, is a helpful way of showing the two different groups. And we have this group of algebra, and we have this group of chemistry. And we know that algebra is 142, except some of those might be in this overlapping section. And we know that 121 take chemistry, and yet some of those might also be in this overlapping section. And we're not entirely sure how many. And there might be this group of people who are neither, they're outside of algebra and chemistry, maybe they're taking biology or something like that, how many could be both? And so again, the way to think about this, I'm going to draw three different scenarios to help illustrate and show you how this problem works. And again, it's to go to the extremes. So kind of scenario one would be an extreme where, okay, let's pretend there is no overlap at all, right? Couldn't the groups look like this? where this is algebra and this is chemistry? Isn't that possible? In which case there would be exactly 142 in algebra because there's no overlap. So 142 actually only take algebra and 121 only take chemistry. And actually that isn't quite right because in that case there would be no buddy in both minus n equals positive 27, that actually doesn't work. That would mean like somehow there would have to be, you know, like a negative negative 27 people in the neither category and that's impossible. Ah, okay, interesting. So what we really know is that if n is zero, in other words, if there's nobody in the neither category, then there could be 27 people in both and that's kind of the minimum possible value. The minimum possible value would be a scenario where there is a slight overlap, a very, very slight overlap with 27 people right there in the middle. 
and then the rest in the algebra category, the rest in the chemistry category, I could, you know, you can figure out how many are only algebra. It would be, you know, 142 minus the 27 that are uh, already accounted for kind of in the shaded region. Chemistry, of course, would be the 121 minus the 27 already accounted for would be only chemistry. But the point is 27 looks like it's kind of the minimum that could be taking both algebra and chemistry. Okay, but it's not asking for the minimum, it's asking for the greatest. So now what we have to do is we have to go the other direction. And this is where the diagram is helpful, right? So the minimum overlap is kind of here at 27, but what if we sort of slide this circle over to the left a little bit, right? So now let's pretend a scenario where, okay, what if it overlaps quite a bit more? Isn't that possible? In other words, of these 121, what if 100 overlap, right? If 100 overlap, now we have 100 that are both. 100 minus what equals 27? Um, 73, right? So it's possible that the mix would be 100 minus 73 is 27. And again, I completely made up the number 100. But the point is I'm showing you that, okay, the minimum value would be 27 that are in both categories. What if it's a lot more? What if it's like 100? Okay, that's possible. That means 73 are in neither, right? And it's a much bigger overlap. Oh, well, what if, and I'm going to change pen colors one more time, and this would kind of be diagram number three. What if this big circle represents uh, algebra? What if the entire chemistry circle is inside the algebra circle, meaning every single person that takes chemistry also takes algebra, and therefore the overlap is literally 121, and the only kind of difference is, you know, however many more people you know, there are taking algebra, 142, you know, minus 121. So that would leave 21 people in this small little sliver who only take algebra. But the point is, the entire group of chemistry is inside, and therefore 121 take both chemistry and algebra. The question is, is it possible for more than 121 to take both? No, because you can't have more people taking both than there are taking either algebra or chemistry. Does that make sense? In other words, 121 take chemistry, so even if every single one of them also takes algebra, that's the most that could possibly take both, because otherwise you have more people taking both than actually take chemistry, and that's just nonsensical. And so really, 121 ends up being the answer to the question. It's the greatest possible number of students that could have taken both. And so hopefully this makes sense visually. Kind of this idea of taking, okay, whichever group is the smallest, and in this case, chemistry represents the smaller number, and kind of sliding it this direction as much as you possibly can until, oh, look at that. Lo and behold, the entire subset is inside the larger subset, and, and it's all accounted for. So 121 students are the most that could possibly take both algebra and chemistry. Hopefully this uh, makes sense to you. Hopefully you learned something, certainly about max-min problems, and of course just a refresher on two sets questions in general. If you found this helpful and want some more on not only sets questions, but all of the other major word problems tested on the GRE, head over to www.dominatethegre.com. Uh, we sell this lesson, all of our word problem lessons a la carte, but of course encourage you to consider our comprehensive GRE quantitative course or our comprehensive GRE course that includes verbal, quantitative, and the essays. And either way, I'll look forward to continuing to work with you and empowering you to dominate the GRE.